For corners, what time is it? Susan Ring. Keeping track of time. What time is it? Most people ask that question many times a day. People do not want to be late for class or early for an appointment. They do not want to wake up too early or go to bed too late. Favorite television shows or celebrations usually happen at a certain time or on certain days. Clocks and calendars help people keep track of what time and day it is. Ancient peoples looked to the seasons to measure the passage of time. They also determined time by the rising and setting of the sun. People knew that when the sun came up in the morning, it was time for a new day. A watch or a clock shows us how much time has passed. Nature also displays the results of time passing. People grow older. Little cubs grow into huge bears, and tiny seeds grow into tall trees. From the use of sundials to the most complicated electric and atomic clocks, people have attempted to keep track of time for centuries. This book explains how people have calculated time over the ages. It also explains how time as we measure it relates to the universe and our solar system. A section at the end of the book answers some common questions about time and provides a timeline that summarizes the history of telling time. The rising of the sun still signals the start of a new day for most people, although midnight is the official start. Time and Space The Big Bang is thought to have taken place approximately 10 to 15 billion years ago. When Time Began Many scientists think that our universe began between 10 and 15 billion years ago with an enormous explosion in space called the Big Bang. Our universe is believed to have come into existence at the moment the Big Bang occurred. Space began to expand, and time started to pass. Billions of years after the Big Bang, our solar system formed. The solar system consists of the sun, the planets, moons and other objects, such as comets and asteroids. It is part of an even larger system, a galaxy called the Milky Way. About every 200 million years, the solar system revolves around the center of the galaxy. This photo shows what a spiral galaxy in the Antlia constellation looked like long ago. The Milky Way is also a spiral galaxy. Stars in other galaxies are very far away. It can take billions of years for their light to reach Earth. By the time their light is visible to us, these stars might no longer exist. They may have collapsed or exploded in space. Although we cannot travel back in time, scientists have found a way for us to look at the past. Using telescopes, astronomers can take pictures of stars whose light has just now reached our solar system. Some of these stars are 12 million light years away. That means we are looking 12 million years into the past. The year. By observing the movements of the sun and other objects in the sky, people began to mark the passing of time. The sun is at the center of our solar system. It is how we measure time on Earth. The sun's gravity pulls all of the planets around it on elliptical, or oval, paths called orbits. Neptune. Saturn. Venus. Pluto. Mars. Sunday Mercury. Earth. Jupiter. Uranus. The closer a planet is to the Sun, the shorter its orbit and year. Mercury's year is about 88 Earth days long. Pluto's year lasts almost 248 Earth years. Each planet's year is measured by how long it takes that planet to make one complete orbit of the Sun. This period of time is called the solar year. Earth takes about 365 days to orbit the Sun, so Earth's solar year is about 365 days long. Calendars today mark most years as only 365 days long. To accommodate the extra quarters of a day, an extra day, February 29th, is added to the year every four years. This year is called a leap year. The month. Ancient peoples watched the moon change its shape from a full moon to a new moon to a full moon again. These changes are known as the phases of the moon. The 29% two days it takes for the moon to go through all of its phases is called a lunar month. The word lunar means of the moon, 
and the word month comes from the word moon. A lunar year consists of 12 lunar months. This adds up to 354 days to 11 days less than a solar year. The solar calendar today uses 12 months, each having 28 to 31 days. The longer months cover the additional 11 days that were not included in the lunar year. Phases of the Moon Full Moon Waning Gibbous Waxing Gibbous Last Quarter First Quarter Waning Crescent Waxing Crescent New Moon Night and Day When it is morning in New York, USA, it is night in Melbourne, Australia. This is because Earth spins on its axis. As it spins, the side of Earth facing the Sun has daytime. The opposite side has nighttime. Earth takes 24 hours to spin all the way around its axis. People use this time to determine the length of one day. Approximately 5,000 years ago, the Babylonians divided a day into 24 sections. They decided that there would be 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. People are not sure why the Babylonians used 60 as a base number. Some think it is because 60 is divisible by so many numbers. Others think that it was because the Babylonians thought the number 6 was important. Daytime in New York This side of Earth is facing the sun, so it is daytime there. At the same time, it is night on the other side of Earth because it faces away from the sun nighttime in Melbourne the number of hours of daylight in a day changes over the course of a year. Some days have more hours of daylight than others. It depends on the time of year and location. Earth is tilted on its axis as it orbits the sun. The number of daylight hours in a particular place is based on the orientation of Earth's tilt. When a hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, it has fewer hours of daylight. When it is tilted towards the sun, it has more hours of daylight. When one hemisphere has the most possible hours of daylight and the other has the fewest, this is called a solstice. Solstices happen twice a year. In March and September,